Good evening, good evening, champions. I hope you're all super fine and uh, welcome to the training. Uh, I hope we are all ready and I hope we are all geared up for what we're gonna be training about today. And um, at the end of the training or during the training, um, please, if you have any questions, note them down. Uh, you can bring them out because I really want to make sure uh, we go through uh, uh, the questions that you have and then we can together help each other in answering those questions because it's not necessary that my answers are the best or my answers are the correct ones. Um, since we are all in the business, we've all experienced um, a lot of things within the business. So I'm pretty sure uh, together we can be able to provide answers to any questions. So what are we going to be talking about today? Uh, let me go back to the past two weeks. Uh, two weeks ago, we had a special training by Milantina and Milantina, she trained about, uh, and the training is on, on, on my YouTube channel, so you can view it from there. Uh, Milantina Marcus from uh, Romania, she trained about how to have a powerful profile on social media and how to add value to people on social media, how to attract people to social media, and how you can really start to engage with people on social media so that it adds to you having um, a large number of prospects that you're talking to about the business or about the products on, on daily basis. And then last week, uh, I went through uh, some of the ways that you can use to make sure that you do not run out of people to talk to. Because I'll tell you for a fact, champions, uh, the most important thing in this business is to always have brand new people that you're introducing to the business or to the products. Once you lack new people to talk to about the business or the products, your momentum will start to go down, your recruiting will start to go down, your retailing will start to go down. So it's important that we do not take lightly the need of making sure that we have a continuous inflow of brand new prospects into our database, into our business. And, and, and today, we're gonna go a step further and, and talk about what should you do then after you've attracted these people into your database, after you have these people into your circle, after you have these people in your funnel, how should you be interacting with them? How should you be uh, keeping, uh, keeping, keeping track of all these new people that you are, that you are talking to about the business or about the products? And, and uh, on my talk today, I'm gonna focus more on how we talk to people about the business, not so much about the products, because we are still on, um, on a series or on the, on the questions of how to recruit on social media. We are still on that one. So you now have people uh, that you're already talking to. And by the way, before I continue, I just wanna pose a question. Uh, if anybody can um, volunteer to share, if you implemented any of the strategies that we talked about last week, if any of you implemented any of the strategies, and I would like you to volunteer and kind of share your experience, uh, maybe your challenges, or maybe you got some results out of that, uh, whatever it is. But I just want you to share a bit of uh, uh, your experience based on what we talked about uh, last week. Last week, we talked about how to never run out of people to talk to or to introduce to forever. We mentioned about uh, Facebook ads. We talked about uh, Facebook Live and Instagram Live. If anybody went live, uh, we talked about the processes of going live. Uh, we talked about um, how you can boost a post and you know get lots of uh, likes, and then you can start to engage with people that liked your post. Uh, we talked about all those things. So I, I'm just curious. I want to know if anybody implemented any of the of the strategies that we talked about on the last meeting, I would like you to 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 comment or to raise your hands, and then I will um, I'll unmute you so that you can share with us your experience. All right, so I'm giving an opportunity for you to share uh, whatever you experience. You don't have to share the massive results that you got. Doesn't matter if you got results or not, the most important thing is to, to have the culture of implementing at least one thing of the many that we train about um, and not to wait for the next training and not to wait for the next training and next training and uh, forgetting about the, the importance of implementing the little that you have learned without waiting until when you're perfect about it here. So yeah, I, I want to pause for a second. So anybody that implemented any of the strategies any of the of the ideas that we shared i'll be waiting for you 
it's important because the biggest reason why we are doing these trainings is so that they can have impact on your business. We are not doing this training so that you can be knowledgeable. No, we are doing this training so that they can have impact on your business. And uh, if these trainings are not bringing impact into your business, then they are definitely um, a not the best way of you, Mark, of you using your time one hour every Tuesday, one hour of my every Tuesday. So we have to make sure they have impact. And if they don't have impact, we, we need to discuss and see what needs to change, what needs to be improved so that the training can have impact. So I'm going to give a few seconds to invite anybody that implemented any of the strategies that we talked about uh, on the last. Okay, we have Barbara here that would like to share. So let me unmute Barbara. All right, all right. Barbara, you're welcome. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Hello, hello. Everyone uh, can get me? Yes, perfect. Okay. Uh, I want to share something, uh, what we learned last time. Uh, then I took the curiosity, curiosity post. Okay. Yes. Uh, on the ads, of FB ads. Mm -hmm. uh, I posted something like, um, would you like, uh, specifically on them, mm -hmm. would you like something like web management, I posted something. Then I said, would you like a product that can, I've forgotten the English that I used. Yeah, but it was a curiosity post. Like the, the feedback was very good. Yeah, so it's something that I am using FB ads though, sorry, I couldn't log in yesterday, but with the few knowledge that I've, learn the what that I have on FB though I need more training on that one. Okay. Yeah, I'm getting some some clients okay. on FB. And also I implemented on learning, getting to know more about the products. Yeah. Use I'm using WhatsApp status and FB. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Barbara. You have given me hope because <laughs> I was starting to feel <laughs> depressed here. Like, okay, no, no one has implemented any of the things that you talked about. So mm -hmm. should you continue with another training or you should just end this training and say, okay, I think we should just go and implement what we learned last week first. So thank you. Thank you for, for sharing. Thank you for sharing. So, so let's continue now further. And uh, I just want to encourage each and everyone right now to really, really up their game on social media or online. Why? Because most of us right now, we are doing a very, very little of the face-to-face, -face, very little of offline. So we need to really up our game on online. If you used to just do maybe a uh, normal post, now you need to do normal post, you need to do boosting, you need to boost your post, you need to do FB ads, you need to do WhatsApp status, Instagram story. A few times you want to go live, you know, you, you need to really, really increase the number of activities. And it's important because even research right now is showing uh, the number of people that are on social media has increased drastically right now. Because a lot of people have somehow been forced to work more from home, have been forced to have less hours in the office. So they are more on social media. So if we have more people on social media and they're spending more time on social media, then how, how sad will it be if an FBO out there misses out that opportunity? Who knows how long this will last? Who knows? I mean, I, know, I don't know if this is going to be the trend or things will change, but all in all, we owe to ourselves to make sure that we really maximize on this, okay? So, so you have people on your, on your influence right now. Maybe someone has responded to your message or, or maybe uh, <clears throat> you prospected someone and someone has gotten back to you or maybe you have put up a Facebook ad that's not aiming at promoting the products, but it's aiming at promoting the business, like the one I shared on the last training. So then people have come to your inbox and they've said, tell me more. You know, I want to know more. You know, those are questions that we'll always be getting when we are interacting with people online, especially when we are going indirect. And indirect is definitely, uh, it's, it's best advised for online. So 
how should you be contacting people and how should you be communicating with people? So you have now uh, suspects, you know, if you have people who are not even yet prospects, you're not sure if they can fit in the business or not, but you're somehow assuming maybe they might fit in the business. And I'll share a few tips that I personally use and um, I'll invite you to ask questions as we proceed so that we make sure we cover each and everything. One of the major questions that we get asked by people is what do you do? And this is a question that you'll get a thousand times, a thousand times. And you need to have an answer to this question. I mean, you need to have a definite known answer to this question. Because if every time you're asked, what do you do? You start to think, oh my God, what do I do? It means you'll definitely reduce your confidence in prospecting people. I was listening to, to Oni's training uh, last Saturday and she said, we need to have a thousand percent conviction when we're interacting with people online. And one of the things that gives you the conviction is when you know I've got the answers. When you know I've got the answers, the biggest reason why a brand new FBO might fear to call an uncle, might fear to call a friend, is because they, they are not sure if they have the answers. So when you're asked what do you do, what should you reply? Most of the times when you're asked what do you do, most people, they'll reply not explaining what they do, but explaining who they are. When you're asked what do you do and you say, uh, I work with forever living products or I do business with forever living products, that's not what you do. That's who you are. When you say I do network marketing, that's not what you do. That's who you are. What you do should be in relation to what the prospects will benefit from what you do. I don't know if I've made sense there. Your answer should be in a way of you thinking about the prospect, not thinking about yourself. When you say, what do you do? You say, okay, I do business with forever living products. That is an answer that's focusing on you, not the prospect. When you're asked, what do you do? I want you to think about the prospect. What does the prospect want to know? What the prospect wants to know is what does what you, what you do, does it have any positive impact on him or her? Will it be of value? Will it be of any benefit to him or her? If it won't be adding any value, it won't be putting in any benefit to you, Moha, then definitely that person is not interested in what you do. Uh, you think about the prospect. The prospect does not care about forever living products, doesn't care about that word forever living products. You care about those three words because you know how powerful forever is, but the prospect doesn't know. Network marketing, those two words, the prospect doesn't know. So what you do is not about who you are, it's about the benefits of what you do. What are the benefits of people when they engage in our business? Number one is they're given an opportunity to start their own business. That's a benefit. Number two, they're given an opportunity to start a part-time business. Number three, they have an opportunity to be coached, to be mentored. Just a just few minutes before I started this meeting, someone, I don't even know, I don't know what business that person does, but just reached out to me and said, brother, uh, good evening, how are you? Uh, I would like you to mentor me in my business and even my life. But at this point, I want us to start with you mentoring me in my business. I don't know what business that person does. Now, so we have people out there who want to start a business, but they're unsure of what they should do. They're not sure of whether they'll be able to make it. And another benefit of our business is that we have a very, very, very low capital. So I want you to think about those benefits. Low capital, I want you to think about part-time, I want you to think about the support that someone gets from our business. I want you to think about the way we actually help people to be business owners. Those are the benefits. So when you are responding to the question of what do you do, respond with those in mind. Don't respond with who you are in mind. Respond with those benefits in mind. I know my, when, I'm, when I'm interacting with people online, uh, I've sent maybe a first message. Uh, I'm expanding my business. I'm sure you've all seen that message. Uh, when they come back to me, okay, I'm interested, tell me more. Or I'm interested, what do you do? I'll always think about that prospect. So I'll say, we coach people how to start a forever business part-time. And I want to explain a little bit why I've said a forever business part-time. I have a number of people that are following me, a number of people that know that I'm in forever. And I really want to make sure if I contact them, and, and if they are getting my message, I want them to get an idea that they are, they're gonna, they are being contacted because of forever. But also what I've come to realize, this is something tricky. 
you know, sometimes when you're building a business, it's, it's about doing something that is in your favor, doing something that you know will make you comfortable to continue doing. So what I realized when I tell people that uh, I coach people how to start a part-time business, in my heart, I still kind of feel like um, it's, I wish if I would tell this person a little bit more, so that I don't have any guilt inside of me that maybe I'm, I'm you know, I'm kind of uh, uh, not really exposing everything to this person, all right? So that's why I say I coach people or we coach people how to start a forever business part-time. That way, my heart is free that, okay, I've already told you it's a forever business. So if you don't like it, it's up to you. If you reply to this message, you are never going to blame me that you did not tell me it's forever because I told you it's forever. If you didn't pay attention, it's up to you. That's one of the reasons why I put forever there, okay? So how to start a forever business part-time? I mean, you don't need to do it that way. You can just say how to start a part-time business, how to, you know, start your own uh, entrepreneurial venture. You can come up with these nice, powerful, enticing uh, words. I'm sure you can do that better than me. And then I share a little bit of my story there, very brief about my story. Why do I put in my story there? I want this person, I want this person to start getting personal with me. If you remember, uh, the, I think it was the last slide on the training we did last week about how we start to introduce people now to the opportunity after you get their numbers. I said one of the most important thing is to uh, connect with those people at a personal level. Let them know your personal engagement with the business, okay? So that's why I share a little bit of my story. I started part-time back in 2007. Then I went, then in 2008, I resigned from my job and went full-time. That's it. That's it from my story. I don't go so deep. So let me give you a call. You see, immediately after I've uh, shared what we do based on the benefits, I've given a bit of my story and then I proceed to the next step because I want you to imagine this is someone that responded to my Facebook ad. This is someone that I sent a, a message. I'm expanding my business. This person probably doesn't know much about me. I don't know much about that person. And I know there's power when you talk to someone uh, you know, when you have a call, when you call someone, there is an extra power. So do your best to call as many prospects as possible. But if it doesn't allow you, then it's okay. You can end with chatting. So I'll say, let me give you a call to share with you how I do it. Then you can see if it can work for you as well. Now, I want you to pay attention. I'm not trying to convince this person. I'm really showing this person that the aim of me making the call is simply to share with you. And then you can see, and, and really... My, my, my fellow champions in here, I really, really urge you, when you're approaching people, make sure that should be your mindset. Your mindset should not be, uh, what can I do to get this person on board? What can I do to, to kind of, uh, you know, it's like you're putting barriers here and there so that someone gets into the trap. No, your mindset should be more of, I just want to share the information with someone and then if they like it, good. If they don't like it, it's also very, very good, okay? So if it can work for you as well, if that's okay, let me have your number. Mine is dash dash dash. If not, it's okay. I really like to have, uh, uh, to give someone an opportunity to say no when I'm interacting with them. I feel every time I give people an opportunity to say no, they don't say no, but I feel more comfortable and they definitely, definitely uh, um, don't feel like they're being sold to or they're being convinced. So it's important to have an answer to this question, what do you do? You're gonna get a lot of that. So it's important to have, you can recraft this message so that it suits you, but it's just important to make, to make sure that you have the answer ready. Now, I've talked a little bit there about your story and, and your story is something that you'll be using a lot. Sometimes you take a section of your story, sometimes you go, you know, the the whole thing, but you need to have your story. Uh, first of all, your story should be authentic. Make sure, please, please do not add anything extra. In my language, you say, usiweke chumvi. I mean, usiweke sukari, usiweke chumvi, meaning what? Don't add any salt. Don't add it. Don't try to spice up your story, no. Because the moment you spice up your story in a way that you know is not real, you will be trapped to always having to say that wrong story, that lie for the rest of your life. Imagine if I lied that I resigned in 2008 and while I did not resign, I would have still been lying up to today and there was nothing that I could do to change that story. So make sure your story is authentic. And a few steps to follow when you're creating your story. Number one, have your background. Include your background in your story. And your background, be careful when you're talking about your background. Most of the times when people talk about their background, because they're trying to to, to amplify forever, 
So they kind of uh, speak very negatively about everything else in their life. They speak very negatively about their jobs. They speak very negatively about their businesses. No, you don't have to, to lie to people that your business or your job is miserable so that they feel forever is good, you know? They say there are two ways to have the tallest building in the city. One is build the tallest building. Another one is demolish the rest of the buildings. Now, you don't need to demolish everything in your life so that forever feels like it was the hero in your life that saved everything. No. If you are living a good, comfortable life, safe. I was living a good, comfortable life, and I love my life. I, I have a very good balance. I, you know, I have time with my kids. You know, Talk about your, balance, your, your background in a good way. And then now introduce the challenges or the reasons that caused you to join forever. And this part, you really, really need to dig deeper. Ask yourself, what are your reasons? Most of the times as FTOs, we don't talk about our reasons to join. We talk about reasons for most people joining forever. I hope you got me. Most of the times we don't talk about our personal reasons why we joined. Instead, we talk about reasons that most people join forever. So someone might say, yeah, so I needed an extra income, but maybe you didn't need an extra income. Maybe what you really needed was, I wanted, maybe, maybe you are a mother and uh, you have your business and you, you take care of the family, but maybe you felt, you got to a point and you felt like, no, I want to provide more for this family. So it's not just about the money. There's that emotion connection with you wanting to provide more. And, and it's important for you to bring that up because when you touch your emotions, then you connect, you connect better with the people that you're talking to and, and, and people will resonate better with you. And that way they will start to feel, okay, if this business can help someone in something that's important to them, maybe it can help with something that is important to me. So don't go general here. Don't go general. Don't go like, okay, I, I used to work for a certain company, uh, but as you know, salary was not enough. And because salary was not enough, I said, let me start another business. No, you, know, you can go a little bit deeper. Yes, we know salary was not enough, but then go a little bit deeper. You know, like salary was not enough. I had that here and there. You know, it reached a point where I could not do this. I could not do that. I like when Mildred talks about her story. I really like it. She talks about buying chicken, I mean, eating chicken today and paying for it next month. You know, you know, getting clothes today and, 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 and paying for, 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 the, for the clothes next month. I really love the way she talks about that story. And, and thinking of, of a story in that order, thinking of a story in that order, it means that when you are introducing people to the business, you are actually communicating what is real because it has to be real. If it's not real, then people will not connect with you better. People will not connect with you better. It's important for it to be, to be as real as possible. All right? So your story, your story is very, very important. And, and one thing that I've realized, these two parts here, your background and your challenges, that's the part that gets your prospect to be hooked. If you don't do that part well, your prospect is probably not as hooked as you think. So that when you're bringing your solution, that person is not really hooked. So do that part well. And then introduce forever now when you're introducing forever i want you to think a little bit when you're introducing forever what you know forever is vast and how forever came to you might come in a whole sort of different ways this and that now at this point you want to start to make the prospect feel that this the whatever the prospect is feeling probably about forever you're kind of anticipating the the, the challenges that most prospects have when it comes to forever and you need to reflect them back to your story and ask yourself, did I face such challenges? Did I have such challenges? If you did, you bring them up. Let me give an example for you to really, really get it. Let's say um, you have shared your story that uh, my name is Enos Salema and um, I'm, a, I'm a computer science student. Let me assume that now I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm sharing my story when I got started. I'm a computer science student. And uh, one of the things that I love about myself is I'm hardworking and I'm doing a couple of things, you know. I'm doing lots of small businesses. I'm selling this, I'm selling this, I'm selling that. And then the one thing that I've come to realize that is that all these businesses, they, are not, they don't have the capacity to take me to my dreams. And it has reached a point where I know, first of all, I'm about to graduate. I need to get serious with my life. It has reached a point where I know I now need to engage myself with something that can really take me to my dreams. So luckily, 
One day I got a call from my sister and she simply said, Enos, just come to town. There's a training about a business come and attend. I was a skeptic. I wasn't, but I said, no, let me just respond. And I went, I attended the meeting. And honestly, when I got out of that meeting, I got out of that meeting uh, excited, but I also had lots of questions, lots of doubts, lots of worries. I got out of that meeting uh, after seeing the testimonies of people that have achieved tremendous things. I knew it was possible, but my biggest worry was, will it work for me? And I'm telling you, so many people I meet today, they have that worry. And I'm, if I, when we are talking about this business, you'll see how the business works. You'll see testimonies of people, and maybe you'll have questions, will it work for you as well? So I'm kind of introducing forever, and in a way, I'm kind of uh, anticipating what most prospects worry about, and I can't go into so much details, you know? And then now I'll talk about the expectations or the success that I already have. So many times when I ask people to share their story and uh, they, they fear because they don't have big success. Now, your story is not your testimony. Your testimony is part of your story, but your story is not your testimony. Your story is not about what you've achieved. Your story is about everything about your journey with forever. And, and that's what for, makes forever to be amazing. That's what makes forever to be an amazing company. And there's a lot, a lot of power in a story. And I can tell you for a fact, if you want to catch people's attention, use a story. A story works. You know, even when, when I get to the point of answering objections, I'll also talk about why and how you could be bringing in stories so that you, you address the objections. And I'll give you an opportunity for you to ask questions on some of the major objections that you get, and then we can be able to help each other on that. I hope you've gotten an idea here of how you share your story. And now, at what point does your story come in? I want you to remember the last slide on the last training. After you have connected, if you've engaged with someone online, maybe they've responded to your ad, maybe you did a Facebook ad or you did a Facebook video and they came in, now, now you have them in your pipeline, okay? After you have them in your pipeline, you want to get personal with them and you get personal with them, one of the quickest way is for you to share your story so that those people feel like, okay, I'm actually chatting or I'm actually engaging here with a normal human being. You know, I'm not just chatting with a computer on the other side. I'm chatting with a normal human being. And then you can bring in now the tool, whether you're going to send that person to a webinar or you're going to send a video, you have brought in your story already. And I just want to look at the chats here to see if there's any question. Okay, making sense. Okay, okay. Uh, okay, okay. Yep. Will it work for me is a definitely common question. Definitely common question. And, and one tip I want to share when it comes to presentation, this is off point a little bit, but I want to give you a tip. Whenever you have to do a presentation, you know, most of our presentations, we, we don't get an opportunity to address the questions that our prospects have. So for you to have an impactful presentation, I want you to always think about the major objections that people have. The major objections. One is I don't have capital. Number two is maybe I don't know how to talk to people. Number three, I don't have people to talk to. Number four, maybe is um, I'm shy. Think about all those objections. And then you kind of list them down and you do your best to make sure that by the end of the presentation, you have answered all those objections. That way you eliminate all the common questions or the common objections a prospect might have. And at the end, the prospect will only have questions that are very personal to them, so that even if it's your, it's your brand new person dealing with them, they can, they can definitely interact with them much, much better. So your story is a vital part of your recruiting process, because without your story, then definitely um, it will be difficult for you to, to engage with people in the best way. Now, let's talk about objections. We have mentioned about objections. Therefore, never, never get upset when people come with questions, even if they're silly questions. Uh, a few times you might want to respond with a silly answer just to make yourself feel good and lose that prospect anyways. <laughs> so when you know, okay, this one I'm losing it for sure. All right, so, so you can easily respond. A silly question you can do with a silly answer so that you lose them for good. You do that very, very rarely. Only a few times that you really want to make sure you feel good about it, okay? So objections are there. And if without an objection, I mean, you, you should be terrified. If you every day you talk to people, no objection, no objection, you should be terrified. If you're doing presentations, no objection, it means people are not really moving with you. So you need people to bring in their questions. And, and there, is, there are some few tips that I want to share when it comes to answering objections. I know we have lots of objections, but a few tips. Number one, if someone brings an objection, develop the culture 
of not answering it right away. You know, someone is saying, okay, I, I love the business, I like it, uh, but you see what I fear is that these products are very expensive. Will I be able to get a customer? The moment they say customer, the moment you finish with the map, you, you're up with the answer. Customer, no, 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 let me tell you. Uh, these products, I'm telling you, they are high quality and people like quality. So because people like quality, then no, you, you need to take, you pause just for even two, three seconds. Pause a little bit. When you pause, you send a message to the, to the prospect there that you are actually listening. When you don't pause, it means you're sending a message to the prospect that I was just waiting for you to finish talking. And probably your question is very silly. I don't even need to think about it. I mean, how can you ask such a silly question prospect? That's how you make the prospect feel. But when you pause, when you pause for a second, you, you, know, you, you give a very, very strong message to the prospect, very strong message to the prospect. So pause for a few seconds and then reply. Now on replying, if you can, if you can, on replying, repeat the question. So if someone says, ah, oh, these products are expensive, you know, uh, and then you have paused for a few seconds. Okay, so you've paused. So you say, okay, so your biggest worry right now is when you buy these products, you might not get customers because the products are too expensive. Is that your question? You know, you kind of re repeat the question. I know at some point you might not be able to implement that, but implement that as many times as possible. Because when you implement that, you kind of continue to bond with the prospect even more. The prospect feels respected and you are sure that when you are answering that question, you are actually answering the right question. Because sometimes we think someone is worried about the price, while well, actually that person is not worried about the price. Maybe that person is worried about the network that person has. Someone might say, ah, these products are expensive. The people around me cannot buy. So maybe this person is not worried about the price. This person is worried about the people around him or her. So if you just go and tackle the price, the price, without tackling the people around that person, you're not really answering that objection. So repeat the question to make sure that you're answering the right question. And then use our famous Bill Felt Found. Bill Felt Found, you know, this one never fails, guys. This one never fails. Bill Felt Found, it always works. So any objection that you get, employ Phil Felt Found. Bring Phil Felt Found. I don't have the money. I understand how you feel. I felt the same way. Also, many people felt the same way. Da 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 da. But I found. But they found. And then you bring in. Uh, you bring in your reply. Now, one tip that I'll give here is on the power of stories. The power of stories, because a story might help you uh, in clarifying and in answering an objection better than any fancy words. If someone talks about the price of the products, do you have a story of anyone that managed to sell these products, although that person had those challenges? If you have someone that's bringing in the time challenge, do you have anybody, any story of someone that managed to build this business on a serious, crazy schedule? Do you have a story of such a person? Because those stories will have a better impact than you sharing that uh, no, you can do the business part. And you see, you knock off the office at 5 p.m. So when you knock off at 5 p.m., maybe you drive to your place, you arrive there at 6 p.m. What do you do from 6 to 7? Why don't you use 6 to 7 to build a business? There you're being tactical and factual, and sometimes facts don't sell. Stories are the ones that sell. So if you can bring in a story, when you're answering these objections, you can definitely tackle most of the objections in a much, much, much easier way. So bring in the stories, bring in as much as you can, bring in as many stories as possible. And, and I'll share some of the objections and then I'll, I'll invite you to chip in any other objection that you have and together we can be able to come up with how to address such objections. I know when we are interacting with people about forever, when we want to introduce them to the business, uh, one of the challenges or one of the objections that we get is, we come across people that have heard about forever and they don't really like it. They've uh, seen maybe someone doing and that person failed. So at this point, they're not in favor of forever. Now, how well, you need a, an, a sentence, a way of you addressing such objections. Now, I want, I want us to go, let me go backwards a little bit. I'm interacting with someone, okay, on social media. That person gave me the number and uh, maybe I, I've, I've called that person. The reason for me calling that person is so that I can set an appointment with that person to meet on a one-on-one. -on -one. 
or in this uh, pandemic time so that I can introduce that person to, to a video or I can introduce that person to a webinar. But the aim of me calling that person is not to do the presentation. So I just want to handle the objection that person brings in so that I can get that person to get to the next level, which is actually watching a video or maybe attending a webinar. I hope we are together on that. So one of my, my the one that I use a lot is this one. If someone says, I oh, know I've heard about forever, I've seen, oh, forever leaving it. I always ask, I always ask when they say that, I'll fi when they finish talking, I'll pause a little bit and I'll change my voice a little bit. Like, by the way, just as out of curiosity, what, one word that you should use a lot of times, just out of curiosity. When you say just out of curiosity, you know, it's a very calming and intriguing. What, whenever you say just out of curiosity, you raise that person's attention. Whenever you use that, just out of curiosity and, and use that tonation. You know, tonation is important when you're communicating with people. Just out of curiosity. Have you ever had an opportunity to get like concrete information about this business from someone that's successful and experienced? And you pause. You wait for that person to answer. Maybe that person, if, that, if I ask someone this person and that person says yes, my next question is, I want to know how current that information. Oh, really? That's amazing. Uh, when, when was it? If that person tells me I was like, last week I attended a meeting or last week I met so-and-so, then for me, I'm no longer interested in pushing that person because that person has got the right information and the information is very current. So why should I be wasting a lot of trying, trying to convince that person otherwise? But I'll tell you, maybe 70% of the people will say no to this question. 70% of people will say, um, not really. You know, during that time I was studying, I was young, or maybe, um, um, you know, it came in at the time when I was not really listening. Yeah, I attended one of them. They will come up with something that will actually give you an opportunity to press for an appointment. So after that, after if they say anything in the line of no, then you go now for the appointment that, okay, now I think, I think it will be fair if I give you an opportunity to attend one of our presentation. Not, I think it's very important for you to come to one of our meeting or to attend one of our presentation. This would be a presentation that's gonna inspire, it's amazing. I mean, you'll see, no, don't oversell things, you know? Just be, I don't know, maybe because in my, for me, maybe my personality, I don't like to, to sound salesy. I don't like to sound like I'm really, 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 you know, I'm spitting, you know, to make sure that I just get this person into the presentation. So it's okay. Uh, I think it's fair for you. I mean, if you have not had concrete information, I think it's fair for you to give yourself an opportunity to really understand. And then you'll see if it's something that can work for you or not. And the good thing is we have actually a meeting this Saturday or we have a meeting this Friday at uh, 7 p.m. And it's online, so I can definitely send you a link if you're available. And then you can be able to attend that. And after that, we can have a chat and see if it's something that can work for you. You see the way I, I, the way I engage with people, the way I, I sound? That's the way you should be sounding with prospects. Because if you sound like you are in need of that person to come for your meeting, you're losing your posture. If you sound like, oh my God, you know, you have to come. You know, some people go even an extra mile and say, can you support me? Please remove the word support. We are in business. This is not an NGO where we need help. No, we are in business. We are looking for partners. Let's just make sense and get someone on board. Okay. So, so I, I want you to craft your own sentences but make sure they go in the line of not convincing. They go in the line of uh, giving people an, an, a no, an opportunity to say a no and exit at any time. You know, use words like um, come and see if it can work for you or not. Um, the reason why I'm communicating with you is so that we can be able to give you mark, uh, concrete information for you to make a better informed decision. You know, such, such, such sentences, you know, they get a prospect, say, okay, fine, let me, let me, let me take a look. Let me take a look. And, and if, you are, if you have a brand new prospect, let's say you have someone that joined the business is brand new. What I normally do when I recruit someone brand new, I really want to make it easy for that person to, to get their prospects uh, to communicate with me, to con connect me with their prospects. So I will normally craft some sentences uh, for that person so that um, the, the person can easily 
you know, kind of send out the messages, you know, to the people that he or she wants to, uh, 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 to invite to the business. So I'm actually going to read uh, a message that I sent to one of the person that I recruited uh, a few days ago. Um, this is a message that I'm sending to him for him to get an idea of how to invite uh, his friends and relatives so that we can be able to interact with them because I want to be involved as much as possible in the beginning. So the message is in this line. You know, uh, hello, Chief. Um, as a good friend, I'm more than happy to invite you to an online launch of my new business this Saturday, 6 p.m. On the launch, together with my partner, we'll share what products we are supplying and how, how they can be of benefit. Can I count on you? It's a simple message. Can I count on you? Because I want this person to, uh, to be able to easily send out these messages, all right? And I also give some more messages. I'm going to read them, but if you need them, I can definitely send them to you. Another one. Um, hello, my dear. I've recently started business with Forever. I was mainly intrigued with the products range, uh, especially the health products. I will be doing an online launch, which will give you an opportunity to learn more about what we have at the comfort of your home. I will do the session with my leader to make sure you get the best. Are you available this Saturday, 6 p.m.? If not, let me know. Thanks. All right. Another one. Um, hello, my dear. I'm sure you don't know, but I recently started using Forever products and I'm loving them. A couple of people have been asking me about the best range of products for immune support. So I will be doing an online session with my leader on how best we can support our immunity. Will that be of interest to you? If yes, I can send you a link. It will be 6 p.m. this Saturday. If not, I will understand. Cheers. All right. So all these are, are messages that I send to someone new that I've introduced to the business because I want them to be able to start interacting uh, uh, with people as soon as possible. Now, I want to share something else here um, on, on how someone can also introduce their relatives to the business. So this is a message that this, uh, my new FBO can send to their prospects. Hello, brother. You probably have noticed from my post, I've recently started business with Forever Living Products. Now, this is someone that likes to go direct to their prospects. I actually ignored it for a very long time until recently. Uh, until recently, I got my questions answered and I jumped in. Just out of curiosity, have you ever had an opportunity to get concrete info on the business from someone successful and experienced? If not, uh, I can arrange an appointment with my leader to give you more info so that you can see if it can work for you or not. So when you send, when you give this to your brand new person, you are actually giving answers to your brand new person on how exactly to interact with their prospects. And it will get them started into actions very, very quickly. And they will start to get uh, people interested and to start people to get questions and all of that. So the idea here is I want my new person to start uh, uh, interacting with people ASAP. But if you look closely, you realize these are more or less the same message that you will use when you're interacting with people. So have... Um, have some sort of uh, ways of you uh, handling objections, okay? So I'm coming back to another objection, the objection of price. I got this, this is a tip that I got recently from one of the, of the training I attended. If someone brings in the question of price, ah, the products are too expensive. You know, you say what, you know what? Our company, Forever Living Products, decided over 40 years ago, it will be easier to explain price once than to apologize uh, forgive them the, the, the typo there, to apologize for quality over and over. And then share a story. What do I mean by that? Someone, you've introduced someone to RG Plus and they say, what? That's, that's expensive, you know? You've shared the benefits, so you, you can't really go back and reshare the benefits. You just want to confirm to this person that, yes, this is a premium product. So you say, you know what, my friend? Forever decided over 40 years ago, that it will be easier to explain price once than to apologize for quality over and over. And then you bring in a story. Now, when I say bring in a story, it doesn't have to be a story around forever. It can be a story of yourself. Like, I, I wanted to buy a ring light. A ring light is a light that you can use uh, when you're doing uh, online video, when you're doing video. So it's like a light, but it's ring. And then uh, when you're doing a video, uh, it will help to light you up so that if you're in the dark, uh, you'll still be showing, uh, your face will still be looking good. So, so I wanted to buy a ring light. This is a true story, by the way. And I said, okay, let me go online. So I went online. I went into one Chinese uh, uh, app 
and I got a ring light and a stand at a very, very cheap price. And I brought it, I paid, I waited for it for like a month. It came in, I used it once, and the light, the light that was coming from that ring light was close to useless. There was no difference between using the ring light and not using the light. So I ended up using it only once, which that one costed me about, uh, if I put it in dollars, the, the, the everything was around maybe, maybe $30. But because it was useless, I, had, I threw it away. I never used it. And then just recently, I bought another one at a price of about $70. $70. So now the ring light has actually costed me $100. If I had forgotten about buying, going for the cheap stuff and I just went for the quality one, it would have just uh, costed me $70. But now it has costed me a lot more. So at this point, I want you, now I'm coming back to the, so at this point, my friend, I want you to understand there's a difference between cost and price. You might pay a very, very uh, smaller price today, but that might cost you more in the long run. So forever we decided, we really want to make sure that when you're buying our products, yes, you might pay more, but in the long run, you'll actually realize they've cost you very little. If you're talking about weight management, you know, you might say about how much money people spend on monthly basis on, on diet programs that don't work, gym programs that don't work. All that is, you know, they're going for the low price, but again, it's costing them more. So you get to decide. So have, have some ways have these major objections and have a ways for you to answer them. And the better you are at answering, the, answering these objections, um, the easier it will be. So yeah, end with objection. Now let me go to another part which is important, follow-up. Now let me, let me put everything together. Last week we ended at what do you need to do to make sure you have a, a continuous inflow of prospects. So you have prospects now. Uh, I shared messages of how you should be interacting with people how to get them to your WhatsApp. I shared those messages and now they are on your WhatsApp. You'll start to interact with them. The first question they'll ask you is, what do you do? What's the business about? So you know how to answer that one. And then when you introduce them to the business, they'll come with objections. So we've talked about how to deal with those objections. Now, when you clear the objection, doesn't mean they're gonna pay right away. Most of the times you clear all the objections, but they are still not ready to, to make the purchase right away or to join right away. So you need to have a system where you keep track of your prospects so that you don't lose them. Now, one key thing is I believe we all do is you need to write down each and every person that you either send a video to or they attend a webinar. You have to have that list. And what I normally do, I put a list on monthly basis. And what I've done, because I don't like to have many books, like this is for my contacts, I just want to have one major book. So on my diary, I've dedicated the first day of every month, that's the day, that's the page where I write my pipeline. My pipeline will be new people that I introduce to the business on that particular month. So if somebody, uh, if I send a video to someone, that's someone that I've shared the information with, they have to go to my pipeline because I want to make sure I don't lose them. Because sometimes when you don't write them down, I'm telling you, you're going to lose out a lot of people. Now, a few extra tips that you can use on follow-up. Number one, connect with your prospects on social media. Literally ask them, you know, what's your Instagram account? What's your Facebook account? Connect with them, send them friend requests, make sure you are connected with them. That way, as you are, as you are, as you are uh, posting on your profiles, on social media profiles, they still get to see your stuff. And if they get to see your stuff, you remain in their mind. So at any point they want to join, they'll come back to you. You know, the person that I recruited this month, who CC? is not someone that I, I don't even remember which year I prospected that person, but that person looked for me. So then I was, ah, now I'm ready, now I'm ready, now I'm ready. And that person joined. Why? He kept on seeing my stuff and he kept on referring. After he joined, he kept on referring to some of the things that I said, oh my God, this person was really following me up. So connect with them on social media, connect with them on WhatsApp, make sure they save your number so that when you do WhatsApp status, they can see your WhatsApp statuses but also you can create a broadcast. This one is not something that I do, but I know it's something a lot of people do and it's working for them and it works. You can create a broadcast of all the people that showed interest in your business, but maybe they're kind of thinking, don't put a broadcast of someone that you just sent a video. I mean, that broadcast you'll be so, will be messing up your mind. You won't even know what to send on that broadcast. But if you know, this is a broadcast of people that said, yes, I'm interested, but I don't have money. I'm searching for capital. Yes, I'm interested, but I'm just afraid of this and that. 
so that you can be sharing testimony stories you know last presentations we had brand new stories we had a lady in namibia you know you have to get that story and now that's the story you can you can broadcast you know you we had um barbara shared a story you know we we have different people sharing their stories you know we have brand new supervisors every now and then now we need to get their stories and then we we send them now to the broadcast that way you are still in touch with the people that uh that, that that you're following up to on the business but also don't forget the follow-up rule whenever you hang up with someone whenever you finish your communication with someone especially if it's via the phone you must confirm when are you communicating again why are you communicating and it has to be me to initiate that communication so if someone says okay no um, just give me some time brother uh, i need to settle my things at the end of the month i would be ready to roll and I'm gonna run this business like nobody, you know? I said, okay, fantastic, that's great. I will be super excited waiting to work with you. Uh, by the way, when is your end month? I have to know. I said, okay, I'm uh, maybe around the 25th. I said, fantastic. So what I'll do, I'll wait for your call, just in case. I'll say exactly that. I'll wait for your call, just in case. I will call you on the 27th. So you see, I know when I'm calling that person, and it's me to call. Not like I'll wait for your call. I'll call you on the 27th. And I have to know why. I'll call you on your 27th to tell me if you're ready to get started or to tell me if you've gotten your capital already. It has to be me. Because if it's not me, then how can I be able to track that person? How can I be able to record uh, when should I call back this person? Otherwise, then I'll always be suffering the, the misery of worrying about, am I disturbing this person too much? You know, I want to call this prospect, but I've been calling this person a number of times. This person's not picking up, this and that. Oh, by the way, one tip I can share about people don't pick up. If you call someone once, they don't pick up. Twice, they don't pick up. Third time, they don't pick up. They don't pick up, they don't pick up. You know, don't, don't waste uh, your time sending them messages like, hello, how are you? I've been trying to call you, uh, but uh, you have not been picking. What time can I call you? They're not going to reply. They're definitely going to go mute again. So instead... Instead, and this is something that I shared uh, with Zambe a couple of days ago. Instead, you just flip that message a little bit. Like, hey, I've realized that I've been calling you a couple of times, but uh, I've not been managing, I've not managed to call you. So I'm going to call you back again tomorrow morning. If it's not a good time, let me know. So that way I've gained back that authority of calling that person. And if that person still doesn't call, I will give that person some time. How much time? There is no rule to that. You just listen to your heart, follow your instincts. Could be a week or so. And then I'll send them a message. Uh, I'm very sorry. I'll send, I'll send a message starting with, I'm very sorry. I'm very sorry. I've been busy. I forgot to follow up on you. How are you doing? You don't say, I've been busy. I forgot to follow up on you. I just wanted to check if you're ready to do the... No, 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 no. You just want to restart the communication with this person you're not trying to get an answer from this person whether they're joining now or not so i'm sorry i've been busy i forgot i have been unable to follow up on you just checking on you how are you doing how is family just to break the silence and once you break the silence then the the communication and the follow-up can continue so it's crucial it's vital you have these i would say some few tips and techniques that you can use when you're making follow-up with people now closing a major part of our business and most people think they have a problem with closing but actually most people do not have a problem with closing most people have a problem with prospecting most people have a problem with uh, sharing the opportunity with enough number of people if you have shared the opportunity with with a small number of people there is no there are no magic sentences to get those few people to join most people fail to recruit. You know, we, we all confuse. We think it's about we are unable to close. No, no, no. We are, we are able to close. We have the ability to close. But if you have a few people, you are just stuck. Because closing requires posture. What is posture? Posture is re responding to prospects regardless of their answers or their responses. What do I mean by that? If a prospect says, no, I'm not interested to your response to this. I'm okay, fine. It's okay. No problem. Thank you for your time. Your response is like that, that I have my posture. You know, you cannot shake me. And you cannot have posture in network marketing 
if you have few prospects, it's impossible. No matter how many uh, confidence building books you're gonna read, no matter how many heart pumping videos you're gonna watch, you will only have posture if you have a large number of people in your pipeline. So we need to work on making sure we have a big pipeline. And that's why the past three weeks we've been talking about pipeline and increasing the number of people in your pipeline. Then closing will mainly be asking questions. Closing has a lot to do with asking questions. You've shared the opportunity. You've finished all the objections. Don't be afraid to pop the question. Don't be afraid to ask the question. Most of the times we are so afraid to ask the questions because we are so afraid to get it no. But we all know if I don't ask a question, I already have a no. That person is not joining unless I ask a question. So I need to pop in the question. I need to ask the question. What did you like about the business? What did you like about the present? I like this and this, this and that, fine, fine. Now, I want you to, to use, um, uh, to, to make your prospects to envision themselves like they're in the business. And one of the tips that I'll give you to make your prospects envision themselves like they're in the business is for you to use the word when versus if. Don't say when you're closing, do your best not to say if you join the business. When you say if you join, you are giving that person an option or an alternative of not joining. Instead, restructure on your closing and say, when we are working together, when you are in the business, you make that person to think and start to imagine what will happen when they're in the business. So when we are working together in this business, uh, we will be training you. When, you're, when we are in the business, we'll be coaching you. Not if you join the business, you will get coaching. Mm -mm. When you're in the business, is much stronger because you want someone to start to feel like you're in the business. And then finally, you should never be afraid to ask the question of when do you want to get started? When do you want to get started? Don't be afraid to ask the questions. Or if you don't want to say when, say, are you, are you ready to get started right now? But all you know, you want to get their timing of when are they ready to get started. So if you've spoken to enough number of people, you've answered all their objections, then you should never worry about asking the question. Ask the question, pop the question. Because that's like, we know without doing the closing, you're just a good communicator, but you're not really a salesperson. We all have to be good at sales. So closing is vital. Closing is important. So we have kind of uh, touched a few tips on how you should be interacting and communicating with people. But I'll tell you, none of these things matter. None of these things work unless you are dealing with a massive number of people. All of these things won't work. If you only have four people in your pipeline, and you say when you join and all these things, they won't work. If they only work when you're dealing with 10, 20, 50 prospects. But if it's just four of them, it's not gonna work. So I really, really want to urge and encourage you to make sure that you really up your game when it comes to massive prospecting so that you have a bigger number. Now, let me end by a few tips that I wanna share before I introduce some questions here. A few tips that you can have when you are closing the month because we are on the last week of the month last week of the month we are on the last week of the month we are left with about a week before we close this month and when it, when we are on end month you need to do your forever business a little bit differently you're not just trying to you know be there you're also trying to see how can i get my results within this time frame because you have a time frame you have four cc's to achieve you have two cc's so one of the things that you can do number one go back to your old customers. Can you go back to your old customers? You know, hundreds of them or 50 of them, go back to them. You can choose to use immunity right now to get them excited. You can do whatever, but go back to your old customers. You can just greet them. You can tell them that um, you have not heard from them for a long time, but currently a lot of people have been asking you about immune support products. So you wanted to reach out to him or her to see if they would like to know about what we have on immunity. You know, go back to them, whatever it is, choose anything, but go back to your old customers and then do a massive outreach because some of the new people that you're going to be connecting with right now, they might give you customers. 
you know, uh, yesterday we coached each other on, on how to do Facebook ads. And, and people have already tried their Facebook ads. Some have already gotten some results. Some have not yet gotten results. But you need to increase. You need to increase the, 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 the strategies that you're using right now in reaching out to people. Why don't you challenge yourself to send a message to 50 people every day for the next seven days? Why don't you challenge yourself? to? Because it's just seven days. You can be crazy for seven days. You can, I mean... You can sleep a few hours for just seven days. You can sleep a few hours for a year, but seven days you can do it. So do something massive. Do something crazy because you only have seven days to make May count. And the worst thing that you can do is for you to become a victim and say, oh my gosh, but Enos, we are lacking this product and this product and this product. Enos, oh my gosh, the prices have gone up. Oh, that is, trust me, that is just a victim mentality. And it's going to comfort you into the grave. I'm telling you, it's going to comfort you and make you feel like it's okay to lose. First of all, we don't have this product. We don't have, no. Once you get into that mode, you're done, you're finished. So get out of that victim mentality and become the winner. You know, step on top of those challenges. I mean, if you don't have aloe vera gel and you have Multimark and there are lots of men out there that are struggling right now, they need multi-marker. Can you imagine what will happen if you send 50 messages to men every day? You're gonna send, you're gonna sell 50 multi-markers in a week. You're gonna do it. What do you have in stock? I mean, if I, if I, I mean, if I send you what we have in Tanzania right now, in terms of products, you all gonna say, oh my God, Zambia, we are blessed. And I'm not happy with this. This is something that I'm really, unhappy with but when it's there and I cannot change it right away the only thing I need to change there is how I deal with it and as a business person as a business owner how I deal with it has to be in a way that profits me if it's in a way that just makes me feel like oh my god I'm being victimized but no do a massive outreach reach out to people think about what you can do with your upline why don't you list down all your pending prospects people that say they're gonna buy people that say they're going to join and use your upline. And if you want to use your upline effectively, make sure, make sure this is important. Make sure before you connect your prospect to your upline, you have to edify your upline. You have to speak amazing things about your upline to your prospect. So learn how to edify your upline. If I have a prospect in Zambia and I want to connect her with Teresa in Lusaka, I'm not just going to say, um, there's a lady called Teresa. I'm giving her your number. She's going to call you. No, I'm going to say, you know what? I'm going to connect you uh, with someone that I know will give you the best information. And I just know the right person. There's a lady called Teresa. This lady is amazing. She's employed. She's building her business part-time. But right now, she's one of our top performers in the whole of Zambia. And I can tell you, she is super busy. So I hope when she gives you a call, if you set an appointment, make sure you're really there on time. I want to edify Teresa. Instead of most of the times as, as, as FBOs, we do exactly the opposite. We edify the prospect. I'll call the app like, you know, uh, Teresa, I, I have to send you this number of my prospect. Please, 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 this prospect, do whatever you can so that this prospect can join. Uh, this prospect is a pastor. We'll get the whole charge. So I'm edifying the prospect and I'm not edifying my leader. So when Teresa calls the prospect, Teresa has been diminished. I have killed her authority over the prospect and I need the prospect to listen to trees and not the other way around. So edify your sponsor, edify your upline, edify whoever that you want to connect your prospect to. And when you do that, you'll actually realize you are the one who will be benefiting the most because all your prospects will be responding very well to your upline. So look for upline support. Think about all the people in your team who have not ordered anything this year. Or this month can you get 10 people who can order 0 0.3 that's three cc's can you get five people who can order 0 0.3 that's 1.5 cc's because every cc counts and you only have seven days to do this crazy massive madness of activities only seven days but what about people in your team that have the potential to move up have you thoroughly combed your whole team to check maybe there's a there's a novice customer somewhere that needs an extra 0 0.6 to get to 2cc. Maybe there's a novice customer who just bought a C9, only wanted to use C9 for his or her own 
just for the usage, not for business, but still call that person and say, well, you know what? I, I, I know you love the C9. Whether you got any results or not, you don't know. But if you got results or not, so do you think you love our products? If you love our products, you have an opportunity to get a bigger discount. If you can make a purchase of this and this amount by certain date, you'll be advanced to the next level and that level will earn you an ever, a forever 35% discount. You know, look for people that can move up. It doesn't have to be superstars, but also look for people that can reach some of our forever minimums. You know, we have a 1cc personal minimum. So I, when, when it's approaching end month, I always look for people who have done 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.7. And I say, hey, you know what? You're about to reach the minimum of 1cc. Are you able to make an order before we close the month? And I'm very straight with them. Are you able to make an order? I don't want to, you know, beat around the bush. Are you able to make an order? If you make this order, you'll reach 1cc. You'll have reached the minimum that Forever advises us to do on a monthly basis. Look for people that have the potential to finish their four ccs. Look for them. You have people in your team right now that has two cc, and you probably think, ah, this person cannot finish four. Two cc? No, they can't. No, you don't know how many prospects they have pending. You don't know if they have custom, but it's you reaching out to them. And, and making them believe that it's possible, that will actually open up the possibilities with them as well. So I want you to pick these end month tips and I want you to implement not one, not two, but all of them. All of them. Because I know right now, each and every one of you listening to this training, I know you need some serious CCs in this one week, just this one week. If you look at what you did in April, and you look at what you have right now, you'll confirm, you'll agree with me, you need some serious CCs in this one week. And you cannot afford to just close the chapter and say, ah, oh, let me wait for June. No, you have to make the most of each and every month that's ahead, that's in front of you. You have to make the most of what you have. That's how you become persistent. That's how you become someone that doesn't give up. So go for everything that you wanted. Don't lose hope. Don't have, you know, most of the times people don't have goals. Make sure you have a goal that you're fighting for these seven days. If it's not 4CC, if it's 3CC, let it be 3CC. If it's 2CC, let it be 2CC. Whatever it is, but there must be a goal that you're working on. The people that you have in your team, there must be a goal that you are working on. So go for it. Go for it. And at this point, before we completely close, I just want to give an opportunity I, I know I've exceeded the time a little bit. I want to give an opportunity to, for anybody who has any question based on what we trained or anything. Uh, I'll give maybe about five minutes of anybody who has a question. But if there's no question, then we're going to end. Anybody who has a question. Okay, anybody who wants any of these messages that I sent, please inbox me on WhatsApp and then uh, I will send the messages to you. I'll send the messages to you. But please make use of the messages. Uh, don't just feel good having the, the messages and not really using them. Make use of the messages. Okay, looks like there's no question. So let's go and implement what we have learned today. Let's go and close the month strongly. And let me wish you all an amazing, amazing month end. We literally have about seven days to close this month. So may God bless everyone. Thank you all so, so very much. Those who don't have my number, that's my WhatsApp number right there. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.